Hi, Bob Nagy, AB5N here with another equipment review. Well, today we're going to be looking at SDR Play's RSPDX, the new top dog in the lineup from the folks in the United Kingdom. Now, you've got a lot of choices out there for buying SDR dongles and all kind of SDR receivers. And you can go from all the way from the cheap stuff up to the more top of the line stuff. Uh, that's what this RSPDX is. It incorporates a lot of suggestions and needs from the previous models of the users of these, and it's just got a bunch of stuff that added to it that I wouldn't have even, even thought of. Like, uh, it's a complete full-featured scanner now. And it has this wider dynamic range and a bunch of things which really improve its operation. So let's take a look at what it does, why it's different than previous models, and why you could use this in the shack. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the RSPDX with its matching free provided program SDR Uno from SDR Play. But this video focuses on the RSPDX box, but shows you the basic features of SDR Uno as well. Here's the RSPDX on the top right. In comparison with a couple of earlier models, the 1A and the 1, you can see that the RSPDX is in a nice metal enclosure, three antenna connectors has the uh, reference input on it on the right USB connector. A lot of improvements over the old models. I don't have all of them here, but you can see that it's definitely a step in the upwards direction. Looking at the radio spectrum, it's obvious that this receiver covers a large part of it, all the way up into the UHF area there. And it also has special focus on under 2 MHz performance, which is a problem area for SDRs. And it also covers up to a 10 MHz wide slice at once, so you can look at a whole bunch of signals. I've always considered three antenna connectors to really be optimum on a high quality receiver or transceiver. The BNC connector is for 200 MHz and under, and the two SMAs can cover the entire range. So whatever band that you're on, you can assign the antenna connector and the appropriate antenna for that range. I own an SDR transceiver that costs 20 times as much as this, and it has two antenna connectors on it. One of the nice features that the RSPDX has is broadcast band filters for AM and FM bands. High power stations that you live near could cause trouble by putting a whole bunch of signal into the front end of your receiver. This will knock it out before it gets in there. The DX has pre-selection filters for many of the amateur and shortwave listening bands. And these filters have been improved from previous RSP models to provide higher performance. A new high dynamic range or HDR mode has been added for performance under 2 MHz, which I mentioned is a difficulty area for SDRs. You see all the bands listed here all the way down to the bottom of the spectrum in that HDR mode. Now what's on these low frequencies? Well, we have two new amateur bands below the AM broadcast band, and also we have the non-directional beacons that are coming from airports, and we also have broadcast stations from Africa and Europe in this region. Now, although the frequency accuracy of the DX is excellent to begin with, they've offered a 24 MHz GPS DO input where you can inject a GPS locked clock and have absolutely accurate frequency all the way up the spectrum. What's also nice is that it also has an open API, which means the tools are available for third party people to develop new features and functions for the RSPDX. Now, while we're looking at the antenna connectors here, what would you put on those antenna connectors? Well, on C, I might put a magnetic loop to cover the very low frequency range. That's really a great low noise antenna. On B, I might put a disc cone to cover up the top of HF all the way up to the low microwave region. And then I might also add a log periodic directional antenna to point at services in the high frequency range that I was interested in. What's really great is that your channel memories can remember the correct antenna connector for that frequency band. So on a quick rundown, what can you listen to on this receiver? The weather radio on VHF, all those channels, all the ham radio bands up to two gigahertz. CB radio, of course, AM and FM broadcast band listening for DX on there all the way down to the very low frequencies, all the shortwave broadcast stations, HF and VHF air traffic control, HF I really like a lot, military air traffic, 11.175, a good one, the Coast Guard radio, all the boats out there, weather sets directly from the satellites down with some software, all wireless microphones, public service radio, uh, in-store radios, people running around with handy talkies, you got your construction crews out there with walkie talkies, family radio service, general and mobile radio service, a lot of traffic on that, international space station, you can listen to some data coming down from that, car fobs, you can hear them, uh, water meters that report automatically, baby monitors around 49 megahertz, uh, the aircraft ADSB beacons, the new beaconing system, and 
almost all HF digital modes using outside software attached to this. And there's tons of other signals, tons of other signals in that range. How about if you're not a ham radio operator or a shortwave listener? There are a ton of other things this unit will do. If you're teaching receiver design, RF lab type of thing, or radio astronomy, the frequency goes up that high. Passive radar you can use it with. Ionosone, that is the testing of the ionosphere. Uh, use it as a general lab spectrum analyzer. How about the uh, Internet of Things, IoT? You can use it as a receiver for testing. That, that's expanding dramatically, that field. And then, of course, Antenna Design Lab. How about if you're designing antenna? This has a lot of applications outside of just general radio listening. Now, even though this video is about the SDR uh, itself, the RSP DX itself, SDR Uno is your interface with this, and it's very important that we take a quick look because this thing is amazingly full featured and it's provided free. <laughs> so let's take a quick look at some of the great things that this can do. First of all, your band selections over here are for the amateur radio bands and for the shortwave broadcast bands. And you can go to select, you know, which chiclets you want to look at here. And there are pre-selection filters associated with this. If you look at the bottom, it says HDR. That's what I'm calling high definition radio. It's a proprietary group of things they've done to improve the performance of this radio under two megahertz, which like I mentioned is a very challenging area for SDRs. Uh, they wouldn't tell me what they did, but let me tell you the net effect is very very nice. The gain control, which you'll be interfacing with quite a bit over here, RF gain, is improved in that they're using digital attenuator in there, and that gives a really nice feel to the RF gain control. You'll always be adjusting this to get the best quality of signals coming in because it's critical to the operation of the radio. I'm going to go back to 20 meters here. Next is that it has three antenna ports on the box and three selectable from here. C being the BNC, that is under 200 megahertz. A and B being the SMAs, which are good all over the entire range of the SDR. It also is able to inject DC voltage into the coax to provide power for a preamp, which you will put at the antenna. If you do add a low noise preamp, do not add it in front of the SDR. Add it at the antenna. It is used to make up for the loss in the uh, signal over the coax feed-in, and it can make a dramatic difference. So you might be looking into that in the future. If you are listening to a signal and you want to adjust the bandwidth, because you do want to conform your receiver bandwidth to the bandwidth of the incoming signal, you simply use your mouse and slide it back and forth here. And what's really keen is on AM signals, where you have a left and right sideband, you can adjust the top and bottom bandwidths asymmetrically, individually, by holding down the control key. It really uh, helps you getting the best quality reception on shortwave broadcast. The receiver also has notch filters and a noise blanker and digital noise reduction adjustable parameters on these and what's really nice the noise blanker has a narrow and wide selection really top-notch feature and the uh, notches here are very useful if you have a persistent carrier or noise in something even if it's not there all the time but if it is you can take it out and they've got several memories here for that that's quite nice the Radio also has an improved AGC double loop uh, circuit there, double state circuit, and automatic gain control inside of a SDR is absolutely critical because uh, terrible things happen if the gain is not controlled correctly. So they've improved the AGC throughout this receiver. Now for FM broadcast, we have stereo FM or mono FM, adjustable bandwidth on that, plus RDS, radio data system, so you can look at the text being shot out by the station on a separate window that pops up. That's very, very nice. And uh, um, the, the playback quality is just wonderful if you're just general FM listening. I use this to uh, work on my FM broadcast station on the mountain. I got the laptop with me. I have a nice spectrum analyzer. I can see exactly what's going on. This also has quick memory. So QMS, QMR, that means, uh, you know, save and, and uh, recall. And that's really nice if you just want to save uh, some quick memories to pop through if you're going across the band. This also has AM sync reception here. That's the SAM up here. And that also has adjustable uh, features on it. So that really helps you null out the fading that goes on on shortwave stations. And that, that's a, a tremendous help. And it really does work quite well. Guess what? They've added scanner features to this. You hit the scanner button, brings up this nice little window which you can move around, and you can either decide, I want to scan a range of frequencies and set it up. Say I want to do the AM uh, aircraft. It's in, done in AM. Um, 
you can just scan the whole band like that or Maureen band or whatever you want to, or set up custom presets. Or you can say, gee, I'm going to go to my uh, FRS GMRS bank of, of uh, channels over here in my memories. And I'd like to scan those. So I'll just select that. And you get to set a, a uh, parameter right here, the threshold, where you can see it right here. Signals under that, not strong enough, will not come through the speakers. Ones above that will pop out. Wow. Very, very nice. Especially setting the uh, custom sets of uh, ranges that you can scan over. Very, very nice. Uh, there are two IF modes over here, I've noticed. Uh, lift and ZIF. And you can look at the manual to sort of learn a little bit more about those if you'd like. I notice on ZIF I'm able to go ahead and open it up to even 10 megahertz bandwidth on the spectrum scope and look at a very wide swath of frequency ranges. I'm going to leave it in LIF right now. Decimation, that has to do with oversampling, and you can read about that in the manual, and it's one of the things that's commonly done in, in uh, digital radios like, like this. This receiver is also capable of multiple receivers at the same time. How about that? I'm going to just slide this up. I had started a second receiver over here. Here's a control panel up top left. You can see it or you don't have to see it. You can just have it on. But you could be sending audio to decoding programs for different modes, listening to something else at the same time. It's a virtual world, folks. Wow. So there you go. Quick overview. You'll get going very, very quickly. But the truth is you can spend months delving into the amazing things that this radio can do provide you months and months of really educational uh, experimentation and growth and an incredible feature set that allows you to listen to virtually anything <laughs> in the majority of the RF spectrum. I did want to show you two free programs that we amateur operators commonly use for digital modes and can be interfaced easily with this combo of Uno and the DX. First is FL Digi and it handles almost all of the digital modes we commonly use. PSK31, Olivia, Thor, Throb. So check it out and it's easy to get the audio fed over to it. The other one is WSJTX and it is from Joe Taylor at Princeton University and it has FT8 which is extremely popular right now. You want to check that out on 14074 and the other amateur bands. It as well has some tremendously interesting modes like micrometeorite scatter and uh, moon bounce and other things you could experiment with. Remember that SDR Uno has CAT or computer aided transceiver control so you can use that as well to send control information to and from other programs. If you're a real hardcore RF engineer, Steve Andrew has written a Spectrum Analyzer program which works with the RSP modules. He's currently updating it for the RSP-DX, and it's very full-featured and fun to use. Now here are some things to be aware of. Always adjust the RF gain control for the best signal. You change frequencies, hit that RF gain control and adjust it for the best quality signal. Use the appropriate antenna for each band. That means under 200 megahertz, well you can use the BNC antenna connector and a long wire might work pretty darn well. But once you get up a little bit higher, even you know VHF and UHF and above, you really should consider a discone antenna or a log periodic antenna and use the SMA connectors which can handle the higher frequencies. I would suggest to ground the RSP PDX. It's a metal box. Be sure that somewhere along the way your system is grounded. And use a quality USB cable, preferably with little ferrite chokes on it. Some of these are integrated into the cables. Sometimes you can snap them on. But I would use one with a choke at both ends and short would be good. Also, you can add a GPSDO frequency standard if you like. It's a 24 megahertz signal required, so check the address shown on the screen. The frequency uh, accuracy is very good on this already. So that's if you're really, you know, going into the lab there. And do not expose the RSPDX to high RF fields. I'm talking about a large broadcast station next door. Are you amateur operators turning on a transmitter with the antenna next to the RSPDX's antenna? You don't want to overload the thing with RF. So what we're looking at here is an ultra-wide range receiver with an exceptional variety of modes, very good dynamic range, and it's easy to interface with lots of PC programs for decoding the modes that it doesn't have. There is no competition anywhere near its price in a receiver like this. For ordering information, check out the nice folks at sdrplay.com. And if you like reviews on ham equipment, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.